This is going to be seven fearful facts about hell. Number one, there are people in hell right now. If you look at Jude verses six and seven, the book of Jude verses six and seven, it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habit habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. According to these verses, the people from Sodom and Gomorrah and those angels which kept not their first estate are presently suffering. S-U-F-F-E-R-I-N-G. Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. It's horrible to think about the fact that these people have been in hell for thousands of years suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. They went to hell way back then, and they're still there to this very day. The rich man in Luke 16 is still in the same place of torment that he went to 2,000 years ago. Korah is still in the pit that he fell into way back in Numbers chapter 16. So before you go to hell, think about how horrible your life is on this earth and think about how way worse it would be in hell. Before you go to hell, think about how good you've got it made on this earth. If you're somebody that has it made. And how much of a change it would be to go from this life to hell. Some men have a horrible life on this earth. And then they die and go to hell. Where it's a thousand times worse. But a common saying among man is that they have the rest of their life to do certain things. The rich man received a lot of good things in his lifetime. But then he was tormented in the next life. In Luke 16, 25, it says, But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. A lot of people go to hell who had a horrible life. So they struggled all their life, and then they went to a place a million times worse and then there's people like the rich man who had everything he could ever want. All his lifetime received good things, but now he's tormented. Compared to Lazarus who begged during his lifetime. He was the beggar that begged the rich man for things. And now Lazarus is in heaven with the Lord and the rich man is in hell being tormented. So that's the first fearful fact about hell is that there are people in hell right now. Number two, hell has supernatural chains of darkness. There seems to be supernatural chains prepared by God to trap any being that goes to hell. The devil possessed maniac and the gospels was able to, able to break the chains and no man could bind him. So if there are angels in hell and if the devil is going to be chained in the bottomless pit, which is a different compartment in hell, then the Lord has supernatural chains prepared. And Second Peter 2, 4 says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. In that verse in the book of Jude, in verse 6, it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Revelation 20, 1 through 3, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless spit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. So imagine being chained in hell 
without a way back to get another chance to be redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if the angels and the devil couldn't break these great chains, there's no way that you can break the chains and escape the eternal punishment of hell. Number three, hell is connected with God's vengeance. In verse 7 of the book of Jude, it says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. You see, the average man believes that God wouldn't allow a person to go to hell and burn for all eternity. However, the Bible teaches that hell is a place where the Lord gets vengeance. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10 says, There is an unrighteous, no, not one. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. So there is a place where you will pay for sin. That is, if you don't accept the payment that was made for sin. Jesus Christ took God's wrath on sin when he died on the cross. He paid the payment for you. All you have to do is accept the payment. If you don't, then you have to pay for your own sins, for all of eternity in hell. It's connected with God's vengeance. In 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 through 9, describing what it's going to be like when the Lord comes back at the second coming, it says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction, from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So these verses are talking about the second coming when the fire that the Lord brings with him will actually turn into a lake of fire on earth and the Lord gets vengeance with fire and the fires of hell. And remember it was the Lord who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. So to all the people who think, God would not send me to hell or God would not allow me to go to hell. He would allow you to go to hell if you reject his way out of hell. He will allow you to go. Just think about all the bad things he's allowing people to go through every day. Every second, someone is being raped or tortured or murdered. All these bad things are happening all day, every day. God will allow you to go to hell. God allowed Jesus Christ to go through hell on the cross. He'll allow you to go to hell. It's where the anger of God's kindled. Number four, hell gets raised in the tribulation. The fourth fearful fact about hell is that it gets raised in the tribulation. Revelation 6, 8 says, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse... And his name that sit on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So here it seems that hell comes with death to earth in some way during the horrible time of the tribulation. So have you ever heard some men say they are going to raise hell tonight? Or they think it's a joke and say that they're going to give them hell? They're going to give someone hell. That's what the Lord's going to do. You see, these people, they go out, they smoke, they drink, they cuss. They won't go to bed. They just stay up all night and they raise hell. So the Lord one day is going to have them smoke and drink and cuss and stay up all night without going to sleep. You know why? It's because in hell, the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever, according to Revelation 14, 11. In Jeremiah 40, 16, it says he'll make them drunk with their own blood. That's at the second coming. In Revelation 14, 11, it says they'll have no rest, day or night. The people who took the mark of the beast, who go to hell, they have no rest, day nor night. So there's going to be smoke in their future. They're going to get drunk in their future. They're going to have no rest in the future. 
They won't have to worry about going to bed. They don't want to go to bed all night right now. They want to stay up all night and party and blaspheme God. And then they're going to be cussing because of that heat that's going to scorch men. In Revelation 16, 8 through 9, there's going to be heat that scorches men with fire. It says in Revelation 16, 8 and 9, And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. So in the tribulation they are scorched with great heat. This causes them to blaspheme and cuss God. And don't doubt for a minute that there are men cussing God in hell right now as we speak. But the fifth fearful fact about hell is that it's hard for people to believe that it's real. When Ezekiel mentioned the Lord bringing a, a fire to burn people, the men who heard him accused him of speaking parables. In Ezekiel 20 verses 47 through 49, it says, And say to the forest of the south, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will kindle a fire in thee, and it shall devour every green tree in thee, and every dry tree. The flaming flame shall not be quenched, and all faces from the south to the north shall be burned therein. And all flesh shall see that I, the Lord, have kindled it. It shall not be quenched. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, they say of me, Doth he not speak parables? So just like men today accused Jesus Christ of teaching a parable about hell in Luke 16 when he preached about the rich man being tormented in flames, they accused Ezekiel of speaking in parables. Men have a hard time believing hell is real. But hell is real. It isn't just the grave. It is no joke. You will literally feel fire and pain all over your body. It's hard for the human mind to imagine a place where you'll go and you'll burn 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 for all eternity. The time length of a thousand years pass and it's still not even started because it's eternity a million years 200 million a billion a trillion a trillion another trillion and it's not started because it's eternity and it goes on and on and on you never get out and you have no hope it's hard for people to fathom that and to believe it's real. It's hard for me to believe it's real at times. Because you don't want to believe it's real. If there's one thing in the Bible that you wish wasn't real, it would be hell. But number six fearful fact about hell is that hell is cast into the lake of fire. In Revelation 20, 13 and 14, it says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So if you're not saved and you died right now, you would go to hell. Where the rich man goes. In Luke chapter 16. Then sometime in the future you will be called up to the great white throne judgment. You'll be judged according to your works. And be cast into the lake of fire. And this is the second death. So this is where you get the saying, out of the frying pan and into the fire. So the, all these people that have been in hell for thousands and thousands of years, they're going to an even worse place of torment in the lake of fire. Number seven, the number seven, the f fearful fact about hell is hell has greater degrees of punishment. In Matthew 24, 14, it says, One to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make a long prayer, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. So, you see at that great white throne judgment, God is just and fair, and he's not going to let the average lost man suffer as much as he will a damnable false teacher suffer. 
A lost man who lives a somewhat moral life, pays his bills, provides for his family. He's good to his wife and makes an honest living, yet never got saved. That man is not going to suffer as much as a pope. He's not going to suffer as much as a lost, money-hungry TV preacher who deceived people so that he could get rich off the gospel. Those are the ones that are going to really burn and suffer for leading millions of people to hell. There is a greater damnation. Have you lived a horrible, wicked, wicked life? We've all done wicked things our whole life, but have you really, really done some wicked stuff? All these perverts messing with little kids, imagine the torment in hell that they're going to receive. There is a greater damnation. If you're lost right now, you are making hell hotter and hotter for when you arrive. It's like how a Christian builds up future rewards for eternity by living holy. The lost man is just cranking up the heat, letting it get hotter and hotter by living like the devil. Every time he sins, he's just cranking it up. Every time he rejects the gospel, he's cranking hell up hotter. He's reserving a greater hotter temperature for him in hell every time that he does something wicked. Every time Joel Osteen, if he's not saved, I'm not judging the man's salvation, but every time he deceives another person, if he's not saved, he's just cranking up hell hotter and hotter and hotter for him when he goes to the lake of fire. So if you're not saved, you better get saved. Obviously, you know you're a sinner. You know Jesus Christ out on the cross Shedding his blood was buried and rose again the third day. If you know that and you know that you're going to hell, then you can be saved. All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid all the He paid the debt. All you have to do is accept the payment. If you will come to Jesus as a guilty sinner and believe on Jesus Christ and that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and resurrected, and put your trust in in that to get you to heaven then you can be saved and have eternal life the bible says in romans 10 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved so if you want to be saved do that today before it's too late and you wind up in hell